Hello everyone, the GM Nightfall playlist has returned, which means it is time for guides so that you can be a conqueror yet again. Week one brings back the Scarlet Keep, the strike that had the longest active drought. When I ranked this strike in my tier list, it went into the A tier, but that was the season 12 version, which I remembered being much harder than it ended up being this season. Sorry for the delay in this guide, I was doing Conqueror in a day on my stream so that I could prep future guides. You're going to need unstoppable and anti-barrier weapons for this. I am recommending Arbalest for anti-barrier and basically any pulse rifle or hand cannon for unstoppable as long as it is a good enemy killing weapon. I recommend a pulse for safety reasons. Shield wise, you're gonna face arc and solar shields somewhat frequently during the strike, wizards with solar and knights with arc. There is also the Acute Burn modifier, which is where you deal 25% more arc damage, but receive 50% more arc damage. It was erroneously posted in an update recently that this was not supposed to appear in Grandmaster, but Bungie has now clarified that it is supposed to be in Grandmaster, and a different modifier is not supposed to be in Grandmaster. As a result of this, you're gonna wanna prioritize arc weapons when possible. Trinity Ghoul goes from what I thought was the worst of the three main exotic bows to potentially the best as that 25% bonus damage gives it a level of consistency that I've really wanted it to have. Having one in your team is really nice for this strike and any places with arc burn really. Risk Runner isn't too bad either as a hybrid offensive and defensive option. The bonus arc resistance is gonna be really nice here, but there aren't any overloads, and I'm hesitant to suggest it when you have to be hit by arc damage first, which is not something I'm trying to encourage right now. I would use Arbalest and Trinity Ghoul over most other exotic weapons in the game for this strike, with Gallarhorn being in third place with two other players on Hothead Rockets. Tarantula, the legendary linear fusion, will also be nice just because it's free bonus arc damage. Two Arbalest and one Ghoul or one 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 with Rockets is going to be great. I ran with two Arbalest and one Ghoul with non-arc damage linears and we were fine. Arbalest is simply too good of a weapon to not bring with you. It completely ignores match game, it rips barriers, it has great damage, the catalyst isn't too bad either, but it's not necessary to use the weapon. Until this thing gets an absolutely massive nerf, it's gonna continue to dominate. Linears are still great. I was using the raid one for solar, but I didn't really need to because, you know, Arbalest. I was using the raid pulse for unstoppable and bonus arc damage. While the incoming arc damage does hurt even more now, I like that my primary weapon felt a bit stronger because historically, normal primary weapons feel like they did barely anything in Grandmaster. Exotic armor-wise, just pick something that matches with your subclass. This isn't rocket surgery, you know, but having one person on Aeons is always going to be welcome, especially if you're using rockets. It could be the Titan, you know, Ursa Furiosa is not desperately needed, it could be anyone, really. You're on Well of Radiance? You know, use Phoenix Protocol. You're on Quiver? Use Orpheus Rig. It's the same thing that we've been doing. Don't get too crazy here. Composition-wise, you don't really need anything crazy. We ran 1-1-1. One, one, one. I ran two Warlocks, one Titan. You got options here. In this gameplay, we were 1-1-1, one, 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 Sentinel Shield, Well of Radiance, and Quiver. Titan... I played it safe on every strike this season as an Ursa Sentinel Titan with Bastion and Offensive Bulwark as my aspects. Fragment-wise, the only thing I really liked was being able to weaken enemies with my grenades since I wasn't using a Void primary weapon to take advantage of anything from the seasonal artifact. If you are running a Void primary, like a Pulse or a Bow or something, feel free to dive hard into volatile round-based builds. You can check out my Season 16 meta video for more information on that kind of stuff, but I'm going to assume that if you're attempting GM Nightfalls on day one, you probably have a good grasp on that kind of stuff already. Warlocks, feel free to run Nova Bomb. Feel free to run Bleak Watcher Stasis Spam with the new Osmiomancy gloves. Feel free to continue to run Well of Radiance. I'm not huge into Arc, but if you still really want to run Chaos Reach, Knock yourselves out. Basically, every subclass is completely viable here. 
The only reason I encourage Void is because Season 16 is all about Void, but I'm not gonna be mad about Stasis or you being on a well. Just be careful in the final boss room if you're using Well of Radiance. We'll, we'll talk about it. Hunters, Night Stalker, or Revenant are gonna continue to be the plays here. I would not bother with Ark. Honestly, until Ark 3.0 rolls around. If you wanna be a Golden Gun, I, that's all right, but Night Stalker is just a solid play for GMs. Revenant is also not bad, but with Quiver being as strong as it is on top of the safety of invisibility, let's just say not much has changed when it comes to the Hunter meta in GMs. Mod-wise, Protective Light got massively nerfed down to 10% effectiveness when it used to be 50%. I do not think it is useful anymore. Resistance mods, I went with two of the combo solar and arc resistance mods from the seasonal artifact. You really want all the help you can get when it comes to arc resist. Probably just double up on it because of the boomer knights and the wizards and the thrall melee. Acolytes deal void damage, but I wouldn't spec for that unless you're really struggling on the elevator. And the solar resistance is nice for those grenades. Otherwise, if you didn't even want to touch combat style mods and instead settled on good base mods, your scavs, your finders, all that kind of stuff, I think you'd be totally fine. The only time I'd recommend building heavily into combat style mods is for those of you building for seasonal void mods for constant volatile rounds. Well of Tenacity, got that huge buff. It's like 50% damage resistance now, but it only lasts for five seconds. So you really got a time picking up the wells to maximize its use. I didn't really feel like it did a whole lot for me, like at all. I wanna experiment a bit more with mod loadouts. Hopefully I'll have a better answer here for the next guide that I do, but I just didn't really feel strongly about anything. You know, you can always go back to taking charge and high energy fire as a base. Just make sure you have some sort of orb generating mod in your helm for easy charging. All right, shut up, let's get in there. Overall, the Scarlet Keep does not really get challenging until the end, and even then, it's something that you can take at your own pace. The boss room is really the only part that I would consider difficult. A lot of this strike is broken into parts where your team has to do stuff that you would normally split up for in the normal version, but in the GM version, you just do it together. The orbs at the beginning and the plates in the middle are the two parts that I'm mainly talking about. As long as you move as a group, None of this should really be that difficult if you're experienced with Grandmaster or even Master. After the orb section, there's a decent amount of enemies on the bridge, including an unstoppable ogre, but this is nothing that a super and a pulse rifle can't solve. When it comes to the plate section, again, just take these plates one at a time. There is nothing that says you need to do multiple plates at the same time. You do the middle one, you kill some adds, you kill the wizard up top, you kill a champion that'll spawn in, and then you just go to the next plate. Keep a lookout for pretty frequently spawning barrier knights in this section. Those unfamiliar with the strike might not be ready for them to be spawning in, but they'll spawn in pretty frequently. So just be ready for them. They're mainly gonna be spawning on that T platform kind of in the middle, that long platform. Moving towards the elevator section. Again, not much you really need to worry about maybe except for a shrieker that you maybe forgot about because it's been over a year since you've had to take this place seriously. It's right before the ramp up to the elevator. The elevator is where I foresee the first issues coming up, and that's because of the acolytes in the walls. You can't really use Titan Barricades or Rifts because they don't travel on the elevator with you. Fortunately, there is one side of the elevator that doesn't have acolytes, and that's the side that you wanna put your back to, using some of the short walls on the elevator itself as cover. This goes for all three trips on the elevator. Just find the side where the acolytes are not spawning and put cover in between you and the acolytes. The first and second floors of the elevator section are another instance of just stick together. You do not need to split up, and I don't recommend it unless you're very experienced. Be aware on the first floor though, both the left and the right sides are open at the same time. And if you all go, let's say to the left, the right side enemies might start creeping up on you and start shooting you from the right side, like across the room. Pick a side, kill a bunch of stuff pretty quickly and move into the room to not get flanked. The second floor has an unstoppable ogre. 
And that's all you really need to know. Just stun it right as you get there, stick together, and take the elevator up to the boss room. Okay, so we're finally at the boss room. You're basically never gonna fight in the main section of the room, like where you came up. Instead, you're gonna opt for using that kind of outer rim. The only issue with this outer rim is that the boss may yeet you into the next dimension off of the cliff. So use wells and rifts with extreme caution. I'd really only recommend them while the boss is in their immune phase and not gonna be booping you off of a cliff. In general, you should try to be moving a little bit. The boss itself is honestly the least of your worries. The main issue here are the adds. You will have a variety of hives spawning in and they're all lethal. Thrall are gonna rush you, Acolytes will spam you, Boomer Knight guns hurt really bad, Wizards hurt really bad, and Melee Knights hurt really bad. Everything hurts really bad. My biggest piece of advice here is to not burn the boss unless you are really confident in what you're doing. If you try to burn the boss, you are going to spawn a ton of adds and they probably will overwhelm you. Almost immediately after starting the fight, you're gonna have Thrall and two Boomer Knights spawn in, around like 90% HP, but potentially sooner in the main arena. They're all gonna spawn in the main arena. Boomer Knights are gonna two-shot you. Try to split up so that you're not all grouped up and accidentally get yourselves killed. Another small chunk of health later, Acolytes are gonna come in with Melee Knights. Same deal, Melee Knights hurt very badly. They are going to chase you into that outer ring. I don't care if you're in a well, and quite frankly, neither do they. A well means nothing to the melee knights. They'll kill you right through it. They don't care. You're gonna wanna kite the enemies here for sure. Try to take out the acolytes as fast as possible before the knights get too close. On the first immunity phase, you will get two wizards and some thrall spawning from the main arena. The wizards will very likely stay in the main arena, but just be ready to move just in case. They hurt very badly. Cover here shouldn't be much of an issue though. Clear the Thrall as they spawn in and rush you. You can see that there aren't a lot of enemies in these waves. It's a small handful at best. The issue comes from spawning them all at once or ignoring them. Do not ignore these adds. Kill them all before progressing on the boss. If anybody dies, don't do any boss damage until everybody is alive again. There's no rush here. There's no enrage. Just take it slow. After immunity one and a little bit of health, Acolytes and one of each knight should be spawning in. Acolytes will spawn from the outer ring doorway on the left. Be aware as this might be literally right next to you depending on where you're standing and they will shred you immediately. Knights will spawn in the main arena and will come to you if they are a melee knight. We did not get any spawns after this wave until the second immunity. There's certainly a potential that adds can show up, just be ready for them. At the second immunity, you will have some Acolytes, some Cursed Thrall, and two Unstoppable Ogres spawn in the main room. This is where a wipe is most likely to happen. You should be instantly killing one of the Ogres as they spawn in, check the video for reference, don't even let them move. If you do this right, by the time you've killed the first, the second will only be getting somewhat close, and it should be easily stunned and taken care of. The issue here is if both ogres get too close, as a melee from these ogres is death no matter what, and if you're all stacked up, then you're all dead. If you need to react to an ogre walking up on you and you're not expecting it and you're not ready for it, you're likely gonna die. You need to be proactive against these ogres. They don't seem like a big deal, like it's just two champions, but they will absolutely wipe you, and I guarantee most wipes in this strike will happen right here. After immunity number two and a little bit of health, you'll have another Acolyte and Boomer Knight wave. I think they're both Boomers this time. Be careful as they will roam into this outer ring along with the boss. They don't normally do that, but in this final part, they do. Don't get complacent here. I don't care what you're running. Just kill the adds because after the adds are dead, you can kill the boss no problem. I cannot stress this enough. Just don't rush this boss kill. There's no need to go fast. There's no need to get yourself into trouble kill each ad wave as they come. That's it. This felt so much worse in season 12. Maybe something got changed. Maybe we just got better. Maybe we have better weapons. I, I don't know. It's not really that bad. It, this is a good stepping stone GM, pushing yourself to the next level here. If you've been able to handle some of the lower end stuff, your devil's lairs, your lake of shadows, 
things like that. This is a good click up from those. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you at the next GM. Did you guys already kill the champ? I didn't do nope. it. Nope. Nope. Death ah! okay.